Hi guys, and welcome to another kit review. So today, we're going to be looking at a kit, an old kit, I should say, from Tamiya. It is their Panzerkampfwagen 4 Alf H. So, all right, so this is in 135 scale, and as it says on the box, it's part of Military Miniature Series number 54. So it contains a commander figure, plastic track, Scherzen, okay? So this kit here came out in the 1980s. This particular one is the 1980s. It is a rebox of the original Panzer IV that came out in 1975, which I do remember making back in the 70s. So we're going to see if it's exactly the same as I remember. Pretty sure it is. Okay, so let's have a look at the box first. All Japanese. This shows you how old this kit is. There's no English on here at all. On the other side, there's advertising for even more old Tamiya kits. Panzer III, Tiger I, Emperor Sherman, KV-1, and the Matilda. And Tamiya's address on the outside in Japan. So, as I said, this is an old kit. So, let's have a look and see. I picked this one up uh, ages ago. I can't remember how much it cost me. It really wasn't that much. All right, so, yep, definitely classic Tamiya instructions with the full history of the vehicle. Something you don't get nowadays, all in English. So we'll have a look at those shortly. The hull, upper and lower. So even here you can see, and I'll show you close up this anyway, there are places there for the batteries. Okay, so this was a motorized one. So that's two hulls. So even though I picked this up off the internet, it's still sealed in its original bags. So first up, you've got turret sides and top and front, plus your decals. Next bag out is the spare track links, jerry cans, helmets, and the Scherzen for the sides, and the figure. Next bag out is the plastic track, and the wheels, etc., drive sprockets for the running gear. Last bag out is your basic mud guards and fittings, etc., for the uh, tank, spare wheels, hatches, exhausts, etc. So that's all the sprues. That's what's in the box. In a second, we'll have a look at the instructions. Okay, so let's have a look at the instructions first. So as I said, this is a kit from the 1980s. It is a rebox of a 1975 kit. So, back in the day, up here, this is a complete history, okay, from start to finish of the Panzer IV development. It even says here, story by Chris Ellis. All right, so thank you, Chris, for all of this. Gives you a rundown of where it was used, as in what campaigns, etc. Okay, so that's something you don't get nowadays. Normally you just get a brief history in multiple languages. And being a classic, it continues on. As I said, a full history of the Panzer IV. All the way through its development, types of guns, specifications, the whole lot. And... Classic Tamiya instructions. Okay, this is what it was like in the 1970s. In English, it actually explains things about the tank itself. Panzer IV tanks were used in large quantities on the battlefield. Things like that. All right? Construction of the rear panel, even the photos of the actual tank. So we start off with exhausts. Going on the back, 
wheels etc going on the main hull tub okay and then straight to putting the top hull on all right so there's no messing around this is tamiya kit straightforward easy build but in classic style you get actual photos okay actual photos of the real tank actual photos of the model to study and explanations all the way along what wheels to do so um old school very old school so carry on putting on the normal idlers drive sprocket they go all on the sides tools go on shows you how to melt the sprue to make a radio aerial accessories spare wheels etc go on more photos of the actual model tools etc on the sides and then you come to constructing the actual gun itself which is made up of as you can see eight different parts and then after that you've got you have got on this a basic gun breech including the basket for catching the shells All right so that's not bad for a old kit to have even this amount of in detail inside really good okay so then you come to commander's hatch top of the turret goes together and you do have side hatches but no interior detail so there's a possibility of possibly putting in an aftermarket kit so that you can leave those hitch hatches open and then you put on the MT-34 so on the sides you'll see on these instructions it tells you in words English how to do each bit and why you're doing it okay turret goes on accessories jerry cans spare wheels bucket spare track and that's basically it it gives you step 15 and you've completed this tank all right tamiya build even back then everything fitted everything worked you, you followed the instructions you never had a problem all right so then you get to even more so actual photos of the model itself shows you how to do the armor plates on the side how to cut them how to bend things including cables it actually explains 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 about the accessories spare wheels etc right so this is very comprehensive very very comprehensive instructions and then you carry on with again how to put the um, extra armor on the sides okay it supports even a photo of an actual um, tank that's hit been hit in the uh, side skirts okay and then this is an actual photo of the model to show you how it's all supposed to go and then we go to decals okay so another thing from the old Tamiya instructions which I always loved gives you this this was extremely interesting um, because it gives you the standard formation of a German Panzer division in 1944 so turret numbers where they all fit in the establishment all right something you don't see on a lot of kids nowadays in fact something you don't see on any kids nowadays from what I can remember so even that even to and a lot of kits do include your divisional marks but they don't tell you what division it is well they might include one which is like third panzer division 
very few actually include SS panzer divisions nowadays. Not politically correct. Okay, so and then it's just a matter of camouflage and it does tell you how to apply camouflage. Okay, so that's even better. Tamiya back in the day used to tell you how to do just about anything with their models. Okay, and that's it. On the back you'll find the sprue sheets, okay, and a list, an actual physical list of all the parts telling you exactly what they are, okay, so that you could never get confused and pick the wrong part. So, as I said, old school Tamiya, all right, if you can ever pick one of these up, and they are still available because I got this one, what, year and a half ago? So they're out there keeping the instructions, even if it is just for the um, standard divisional formations information. Yeah, you can't go wrong with that. Very handy. Okay, so that's enough of the instructions. In a second, we'll have a look at the sprues. Okay, so welcome back. First up, let's have a look at the decals. Okay, so here we are. Standard Tamiya decals. All right. Um, I don't know if you can actually see this, and I'll give you still of these like I normally do. But even though this is a 1980s kit, the white around the crosses and the white of the actual divisional insignia is still white. It hasn't gone yellow. There is uh, foxing, which is the little brown spots you'll see on old decal sheets, old books. That's called foxing. Okay. This here looks to be very reminiscent of um, the original Panzer II model kit from the 70s. And I wouldn't be surprised if these are the same decals from the Panzer II that they've used in this particular Panzer IV. All right, so there's the decals. So next we'll have a look at the lower hull. So inside, okay, so, and it does say here, I don't know if you can see it. I'll see if I can get it close for you. There it is, 1975. Okay, made in Japan. All right, 1975. That's where the batteries sit. Okay, that's where the switch is. Okay, so yes, this was a motorized at one stage. Okay, detail on the side. It's not yeehaw. Okay, nothing on the bottom. So, no bolt texture, no nothing. So, like I said, this is a 1980s rebox of a 1975 kit, so I don't expect miracles on it, but easy, easy kit to put together. So that's the bottom. So let's have a look at the top. All right, so even though as I said, old kit, it does have, okay, texture, all right, for the treads, on the side here, bolts on the panelling at the front, hinges around the front hatches, and hinges, etc., around the engine hatches. So, old kit, don't worry about the fact that it hasn't got detail here because that you'll actually put on from the other sprues all right so that's the whole top nothing to see on the inside a bit more writing here again I want to get that right there there we go all right 1975 okay
So let's have a look at the sprues. First up, the wheels, right, and the drive sprockets. So let's have a look. Nice bolt detail. Bolt detail on the sprocket. Sprocket, sorry. <laughs> Suspension bogies, all right. Really nice bolt detail. Something you can pick out with a wash. That's easy gun. All right. This one's coming loose, but don't worry about that. Okay, as you can see, it has got a reasonable amount of detail. Let's turn it over and see what the other side looks like. Yep. I mean, the sprockets, I don't know if the teeth on the sprockets are that. That would have to be a video reference to see online. But the detail for an old kit is pretty good. Pretty good. Alright, so next, next sprue will be this one. So this is your turret. Turret halves, turret top, turret bin, front, okay, gun barrel, hatches, hatches, this is your internal parts for the gun breech, okay, so let's have a look at the top of this beastie, alright, so, top of the turret, not much detail, not much bolt detail, definitely not much in the way of, um, there is a, I don't know if I can get that close, there you go. So there is a, I'm sorry, out of focus again. Apologies for that. So there is a weld line across the middle of the turret tur top. But it's not exactly uh, fantastic. So if you wanted to, you could redo it. But um, that depends on how far you want to take this for an old tank. Turret sides, same again. Some well detail, not much else. All right, hatches. There's your MP34. Detail is pretty good for an old kit. You could get away with that one. Or you might want to replace it with something out of one of the newer, more detailed kits. Okay, so that's your turret. Breach, etc. So... So next, let's have a look at, okay, so back of the tank, mud guards, spare wheels, tools, etc. Okay, so, fair, so basically this, this particular sprue is your add-ons for the main body. So let's have a look. So, some detail, not a great. A, there's not a great deal of bolt detail on this Panzer IV model, and that's not surprising at all. All right. So, the hooks are probably too heavy. The handles are probably too thick and heavy. All right. The tools. Yeah, I've seen better quality tools, but um, like I say, it's a Tamiya kit, it has detail on the hatches, let's swap her over and see if there's any detail on the inside, and yes indeed there is detail on the inside. Okay, so as a great little kit for a um, beginner, or moderate, who's dealing, who likes to play around with weathering and stuff like this, this kit's great. This kit will be fine. It 
will be fine. Okay, so next we have these are your accessories. You've got two cables, okay, plastic, spare track links to load on the front or wherever, spare wheels, jerry cans, and another cable that goes on the back. Okay, so let's have a close look. Jerry cans, well, I don't think jerry can styling has changed much in, uh, what are we in now, 50 years? Although you can get um, add-on ones which have photo etch parts on them and things like that. But um, that depends on how far you want to go with the detail. The cable, yes, you could probably replace the cables with aftermarkets if you wanted to, but the fact that you actually get three cables, you don't have to use three cables. In fact, because it's stretched out like this, you could even use this in a diorama as one tank towing another without too much drama as far as a straight line is concerned. So that's something to think about. You know, you don't have to use these accessories on this particular tank. And last brew is your add-on armor plates. So you've got your turret and your sides, your figure, lots of handles and brackets for the armor plates. Okay, so this basically is an extra sprue. You could leave this off entirely and just have a standard Panzer IV Alst H without the Schurzen. The detail on this, on these is not too bad. It does have some minor detail on it. Not um, prominent, but if you picked it out with a bit of wash, wouldn't be too bad. The figure, Tamiya quality, got his headphones on, there is a bit of flash on the figure, so that's a bit of a clean up, but overall this kit is Tamiya quality, okay, not much flash, not much clean up, except for your usual mold lines. Lines. Okay, and last thing to show you is the vinyls. Polycaps, okay, bunch of polycaps for your wheels and the tracks. So don't worry about those. That is the rubber bands that are perished. All right, standard vinyl tracks. Yes, you could probably get away with replacing those with aftermarkets. Entirely up to you. If you're going to put the side skirts on, it's probably not worth it. But if you're going to leave them off, or leave a couple of, the, a couple of them off, then yeah, replace these. That way, aftermarkets will give you the correct amount of track sag. Okay, and that is, for all intents and purposes... Tamiya's Panzer IV of H from the of H from the 1980s and yeah for a 1980s Reeboks of a 1975 kit which I do remember making back in the 70s so it shows you how old I am um, the quality is really good okay I can't see a problem putting this kit together. It's definitely just standard Tamiya, and Tamiya's quality has always been like this from the 70s to now. Tamiya kit, like they say, 
throw the paints in the box, throw the glue in the box, shake it around, out comes a completed model. No stress or drama. One thing about Tamiya kits, they're perfect weekenders. After you've done all your complex Broncos and what have you, Tamiya, easy, weekend kit, over and done with. All right, so as usual, hope you've got something from it, from it, from this video, I should say. I'm having a bad day today. Sorry, guys. Anyway, like I said, hope you did get something from this video. And until next time, see you later.